Hi everybody, Pastor Jimmy here. We're going to continue looking at 1 Peter. We're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 3 today. And in this video, as we start out uh, looking at some what some consider a touchy subject in the Bible here, but we're going to look at how Peter looks at uh, wives and husbands. We're going to look at several different things, but we're going to start out by looking at 1 Peter uh, chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 1 through 7. So 1 through 7 in this video. So go ahead, take your Bible, turn to 1 Peter chapter 3, and read the first seven verses. Uh, we may go farther. I'll stop and let you catch up. But for now, first seven verses, and then we'll read them and get into the video. All right, hopefully you had a chance to read that. Uh, I'm going to read some of this to you. 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 1 through 7 says, Wives, Likewise, be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. When they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear, do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. For in this manner... In former times, the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves, being submissive to their own husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are if you do good and are not afraid with any terror. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. So we see here... God giving Peter instructions to give to husbands and wives. So before we get started with this, though, I want to give you a little background here on maybe why Peter is writing this and some things that are happening. In the culture in that day, it was almost unthinkable. It was almost uh, inconceivable, so to say, that a wife would take on a different religion than her husband. So as the women here in this, in this culture began to find Jesus and began to follow Jesus, but maybe their husbands were not, this was unheard of. And so Christian women who came to Jesus before their husbands did, uh, there was a lot of questions to be asked. There was a lot of things that they were wondering uh, what to do. And so this teaching about submission was very relevant to them um, for the married women who began to follow Jesus. They might ask the question, should I leave my husband, or, or should I change my behavior, or should I assume a superior position to him now because I'm with Jesus? These are some of the questions. And here's Peter telling them that the godly wife, though, will be submissive to her husband. And now, understand that submission isn't a reward for the husband's good behavior, but it's the proper order or the, the command of God to them. So, don't be submissive to your husband because of how he's acting. Be submissive to your husband because that's what God has commanded. And he also wanted them to know that submission is more in your heart than the way you act and what you do. It's demonstrated by the surrendering of Jesus. So Peter carefully observes here that wives are called to submit to their husbands. But notice that he says they're submit to their own husbands. Not all men in general, not all men uh, in the world, but submit to their husbands. And especially those whose husbands did not obey the word. It means they have not come to know Jesus Christ. And so Peter's telling them here to uh, go obey the word, even if your husband doesn't, but still be submissive to him. It's an ideal here that if they don't obey the word, that by their conduct, by the way they should act, their wives may lead them to Christ. And so Peter is telling the wives here, he's saying, uh, your submission is a powerful, powerful form of witness to these people. And it's your trust in God, a kind of faith that you have. And it's without a word. Peter reminds them that God's plan is for them to be a part of the family of God and their husbands to be a part of that family as well. And that they can impact their husbands in many, many ways. And one way is being submissive as the Lord has called them to be submissive to their husband. And then he goes on to tell them about their adornment here. And he says, don't let your adornment be merely 
outward. So a lot of people believe that Peter's telling them exactly what they were supposed to wear and what they couldn't wear. But I don't believe this. I don't believe that Peter was forbidding their adornment. I think he was wanting them to say this, hey, don't don't worry so much about the way you look on the outside compared to the way you look on the inside. I think we get so, not just women, we get so concerned about our outwardly appearance that we don't worry about the inward appearance that God is concerned about. And so Peter wasn't forbidding them from fixing their hair or wearing jewelry or, or wearing apparel. What he really wanted them to understand is that real beauty comes from the heart. Real beauty comes from the heart. It isn't something you wear, something that you can show off to others in a mirror. It's who you are inside. That's where your real beauty comes from. So the question that he had and that I would have and that others have had is, what do you depend on or where do you look to make yourself beautiful? Peter's point isn't that these things aren't forbidden to make yourself beautiful, but your adornment should not come from the outwardly look. It should come from an inwardly look. And then he goes on to tell the wives, he's like, hey, this isn't something new, though. I'm not just making this up. You can go back to the Old Testament and look at the holy women who trusted God and how they adorned themselves in their faith and their trust. And he called out these women that they were adorned with. And so here we see Peter giving the wives uh, some advice and some ways to, to be with their husbands, especially those who are not come to know Christ. Outwardly appearance is not as important as inwardly appearance, is what Peter is telling them. But then he doesn't let the husbands off the hook. Listen to this. Now he goes to the husbands. He says, dwell with them. Dwell with them. A godly husband will dwell or live with his wife. He doesn't just merely share a house or he doesn't just merely come and go as he pleases. He shares, he dwells, he lives with them. A godly husband understands this. A godly husband understands that you are one with your wife. When you and your wife are married, you became one flesh, and you are one with your wife now. And that is biblical. And that biblical husband, a, a Christian husband, a godly husband, should understand this. And when a husband has this understanding, God will use him to direct and move his household into a way where the woman wants to submit. The woman wants to follow the husband where he's going in the way God is leading them. And so we see husband's responsibility in this, in this household. A godly husband will know how to make his wife feel honored. A godly husband will know that she submits and takes care and does the things she does because she is honored by the husband. And I want you to think about something. We think about our world and the world we live in, but when Peter was writing this, this was a, 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 a new ideal. This was an ideal that pe people will look at and scoff. He lived in a culture where the, the woman had no rights. The man had absolute right over the wife. The right, wife had no rights. In the Roman law, if a husband walked in and the wife was committing adultery, he could kill the wife right there. But if a wife walked in on a husband committing adultery, she could not do anything. She had no power, could not do anything over him. But now we see Peter saying, husbands, it's your responsibility, your job to show the wife what it means to live in Christ, to be one with your wife, to have unity in the house. You are to have the same duties and obligations. Because you are heirs together. Your wife is a Christian. You are a Christian. You are heirs to the throne of God, to, the, to, the, to be a child of God together. And you should live your life that way. And then he gives them a warning. And he says, if you don't live this way, and you don't treat your wives this way, your praise, prayers may be hindered. It's a good warning for us all that sin can keep us from hearing from God hearing our prayers and moving on our prayers. Sin can keep can hinder the things that we want to do for God in our lives. And one of those sins is us as husbands not treating our wives and being godly the way we should. Wives not living the godly life that God wants you to live. And when we do these things, our prayers may be hindered. 
So in this first section, this first part of 1 Peter chapter 3, we see God giving instructions to wives and husbands. Maybe not the instructions that we normally think, but he gives us a good idea of how we should live our lives as husband and wives. The respect we should have for each other. The way we should come together as one in God. And when we do those things, the household will be run by God, not by man, not by woman. And that's the way we as husbands and wives, Christian husbands and wives, should live and set an example for the world. But I'm afraid in our world today, too many Christian families aren't setting this example. One side or the other believes they're right or they're wrong and there's no, no coming together with God. There's no oneness. There's no unity. There's no understanding of how God has set up the household. And we see this in our world today where divorce is at all-time high. Why? Because we as Christians are not teaching our children by example. We as Christians are not showing the world by example what it means to have Christian households. So I encourage you, husbands and wives, Go and live your life the way God wants you to live, but pray together, read the Bible together, go to church together, find God together in your houses. Maybe you're saying, hey preacher, why don't I watch this video? I'm not married. I, I don't have any plans to get married ever. Well, still some good things you can learn from here. The way that you adorn yourself, man or woman, the way you adorn yourself should concern yourself with the inside, not with what is on the outside. Sin can hinder your prayers. No matter what kind of sin it is, sin it is, it can hinder your prayers. So there's still some you can learn. So I encourage all of you, after the video, spend a little time with God praying. If you are married, spend some time with your spouse praying, reading the Bible, and seeing what it is that God wants you to do in your life for Him.